Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar hosted by Cox and & Kings and Visit Finland. We'll hear from two speakers today, Heli Mendy, the head of Visit Finland North America, and Michelle Otters, the Europe Destination Specialist for Cox & Kings. So to start us off today, we're going to initially start um, with a presentation from Heli. Hello, everyone. Uh, so happy to be here and thank you for the invitation, Claire. Uh, Finland uh, uh, has been ranked as the safest country in the world and, and, for example, as also one of the most sustainable tourism destinations. And according to the United Nations ranking, Finland is actually now for the second year in a row the happiest country in the world. Well, we have a good infrastructure throughout the country with great public transportation and education, healthcare and social security systems. But Finland's biggest asset is the pure nature, which is close everywhere and offers plenty to explore. Finland has a very distinguished four, uh, has very distinguished four seasons and due to the lengthy winter period, it really is a winter wonderland. On the map, it looks like Finland is uh, very far in the north in Europe, but actually it is well accessible uh, with decent flight times from the United States. Here in this map, uh, you can see how we see the world. Finland is actually in the middle of every, everything. Due to the northern flight route, the flight times are not that bad. For example, New York Helsinki is eight hours, five minutes. Chicago Helsinki, nine hours, 35 minutes. And San Francisco Helsinki, 10 hours, 40 minutes. And Finnair is also reporting that Los Angeles Helsinki flight scheduled time is 10 hours, 35 minutes. Finland is a relatively small country, but big in things to discover. Our land area space is eighth largest in, in Europe. Europe has 44 countries, so uh, Finland is, uh, is uh, eighth largest country in Europe. Um, but our population is only five and a uh, half million people, which means that the, uh, we are uh, population wise, we are only the 23rd biggest country in Europe. So quite small. Our currency is Euro, we have uh, uh, three official languages in the country, Finnish, most of us speak Finnish, and then a, major, a minority of people speak also Swedish. And then we have our indigenous uh, people living up in the northern part of Finland, in Lapland, Sami people, only about 1,700 persons, and they have their own languages. Nearly everyone speaks English in Finland. Uh, we start to learn English at school. Uh, and it's really hard to find a place where nobody understands English. The length of the country is about 720 miles and now uh, it's about 335 miles wide. 10% of our country is covered with water and uh, over 70% with forest. We have a lot of national parks, 40 altogether, and 188,000 lakes. We also have about half a million summer cottages. That's a very popular thing within us Finns. We spend a lot of uh, our weekends during the summertime and also summer holidays in our cottages or someone in the family has a cottage. We have uh, over 2 million actually, they say that we have nearly 3 million saunas in Finland. Nobody really knows the exact number, but there are plenty of them which means that they are uh, about the same amount of sonas than, than uh, uh, vehicles in the country. We have four uh, regions in Finland, uh, Helsinki region in the south, the capital of Helsinki is situated there, uh, about a million inhabitants in that area. So uh, one fifth of the whole population almost lives in the south. Coast and archipelago of Finland, the coast uh, line starts from the border of Russia, uh, the, our east side is Russia and on our left side is Sweden and then we share a short uh, border together with Norway also all the way in the north. So the coast uh, line uh, starts from the border of Russia and goes all the way to the uh, border of, of Sweden up in the north. We have a huge archipelago, uh, if not the largest, at least one of the largest archipelagos in the world. A second region is the Lakeland area, which is the heart of Finland. Uh, a big part of the uh, southern part of Finland is covered with lakes. Uh, and then Lapland, the northern part of Finland, which has more reindeer than inhabitants. And 200 nights, northern lights, 
possibility to see them and of course the one and only Santa Claus. Here in, in this picture uh, you can see in the left hand corner of a picture of uh, one of our big parks in, in Helsinki, a Kaivapuisto Park. In Helsinki, we tend to get snow around Christmas time, sometimes in January, and it lasts until March usually. Uh, winter in the south, where our capital Helsinki is located, is much shorter than in the north in Lapland, where it can last up to six months. And if you, by the way, look at the picture on the right hand uh, corner, you will see a group of people wrapped in towels about to dip in the icy water. Winter swimming is actually a very popular uh, with many, but usually when having sauna, boosts your blood circulation and definitely cools you off. Finland has one of the cleanest air and water on Earth, and most silent areas in the world are also in Finland. Uh, as 70% of the country is covered with trees, it is very easy to enjoy the nature everywhere you go. Nordic cuisine uh, has become quite popular um, throughout the world. And also in Finland, we have a very vibrant food scene right now. We use quite innovatively natural ingredients in our Nordic cuisine. and um, the laid back atmosphere is uh, what our food culture is all about. Capital Helsinki, as mentioned, is located in the very south of the country by Baltic Sea. The city was founded by the King of Sweden in the year of 1550 and it became the capital of Finland in 1812 when Finland was under the regime of Russian Empire. Finland became independent in 1917, so about 102 years ago, and that's when also Helsinki uh, started to grow and develop. Visiting Helsinki is always easy. The city is very functional and compact and everything there uh, in the city center area is within walking distance. There are no great traffic jams. The public transportation system is, is great. Cycling is easy and the locals are very happy to help the visitors to make the most of their visit. Helsinki is one of the few capital cities in the world where nature is, is very close, even in the heart of the city with the majestic shoreline, archipelago, parks and forests. Uh, you can really sense the proximity of the sea everywhere, as the city has over 100 kilometers of shoreline and around 300 islands in its archipelago. One of the most popular year-round attractions in Helsinki is the Suomilina Fortress Island, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So what to do in Helsinki? Well, shopping souvenirs is what probably on most visitors to do list. During Christmas time, there is a Christmas market in the city center with small booths offering handicrafts and delicacies. And in short walking distance from the Christmas market, there is also the market square located in one end of the uh, Esplanade Street. The booths are open year round and sell local treats and souvenirs. And there are also heated tents where you can enjoy a steaming hot cup of coffee even on the coldest winter day. Helsinki has an innovative and uh, active food culture. You can enjoy deli delicious local food from fresh seasonal ingredients, treat yourself out to a meal in a Michelin star restaurant or in a zero waste restaurant, or attend one of the many popular food events, um, satisfy your appetite in a pop-up restaurant. We use a lot of wild food ingredients in our cuisine, for example, forest mushrooms and different kinds of berries. And we also eat a lot of fish and a very special dark bread made of rye. You can find beautiful minimalist design all around Finland, but Helsinki is a true design capital and Finland's world renowned modern design heritage can be seen everywhere in Helsinki. Famous brands like Marimekko, Itala, Arthek and Arabia are a cool part of everyday life. There is no way you can miss them and other great design. Helsinki has been the world design capital 2012 and we have a district called Design District with a lot, a lot of small design shops. Helsinki is also the home of new fashion brands such as Makia and Samuyi, which are exporting also to the United States. 
Helsinki is also a city of unique architectural layers. Because of its history, it has been greatly influenced by both East and West. The cityscape in, in Helsinki harmoniously combines elements of neoclassicism, Art Nouveau, Alvar Aalto and contemporary architecture, offering a fascinating journey through the changing styles of past centuries. Some examples of the more modern architecture are, for example, Amos Rex Art Museum. Helsinki Airport is going through a, a big renovation right now and a new central building is being built. There are also new modern public saunas, Löylu and Allas, and the new central library, Odi, which means Ode and is the new living room of Helsinki people. Uh, new York Times wrote about Odi. It is not a normal library. You should go and uh, have your clients to go and check it when in Helsinki, it's definitely worth to see. Even though Helsinki is small in size compared to the big metropoles of the world, it does have uh, countless boutiques and larger shopping malls that are packed with highly desirable Finnish design and architect uh, international brands, as, as well as well as unique Finnish delicacies. Sauna, or actually sauna, as we pronounce it, is probably the only Finnish word everyone around the world knows without knowing that it is Finnish. Sauna has a long history in Finland, first being invented by our ancestors to have a warm place to wash themselves during the cold winters, and then later evolving to a well-being oasis of every Finnish family. Being the capital of Finland, it should not be a surprise that Helsinki has some great public saunas, both traditional neighborhood saunas and brand new design saunas. There is absolutely no better way to get to the heart of Finnish identity than discovering the urban sauna culture in, in Helsinki. This picture is from Ala Sea Pool, which has a sea heated pool built over the seawater and open year round. It also has a cool cold water pool. There are Many other winter activities also to do in for more adventurous ones, um, uh, red trip, ice experience, survival suit experience in Helsinki and fat biking in the winter conditions for people who are looking for adventure uh, activities. There are several nice smaller towns within short distance from Helsinki to visit. As Porvo is one of the most popular excursion destinations, the old town Porvo is a true step back in time with its historic wooden houses and resting amongst the mosaic of cobblestone streets. Um, there are also uh, a lot of small shops and cafes which are quite comfortable and easy to do souvenir shopping and just to relax. Let's move on to Lapland. The northern part of Finland is called Lapland, originally home of Sami people and reindeer herders. Today's Finnish Lapland has one of the best, if not best, infrastructure of all Arctic areas in the world. There are many ski resorts and several international airports, although they may be small in size, but they are serving thousands of people arriving from all over the world every year. But still, Lapland has more reindeer than people, and there are plenty of vast and majestic wilderness areas. One of the most remar remarkable features of Finland is light. When the endless sunshine of summer gives way to dark winter, the northern lights appear like magic and lighten up the sky. The further north you go, the greater the chances of spotting the aurora borealis, the northern lights, is. Uh, in Finnish Lapland, the, um, uh, the chance of spotting the aurora borealis uh, is about 200 nights a year. It, of course, depends on, on the, uh, winter, uh, the weather conditions. If it's cloudy, then there is nothing we can do about that. But the potential is there uh, as soon as the nights get dark enough, which is around in September. And uh, the northern light season lasts until April when the day starts to be long again. Uh, what to do in Lapland then? Uh, huskies is probably one of the most popular activities, going on a husky ride uh, on a frozen lake or um, uh, frozen snowy wheels, fields, riding a sled pulled with huskies and listening just uh, the quietness of the nature is a beautiful and unforgettable experience. 
There are also a lot of options to do snowmobiling all around Lapland, as well as skiing, snowboarding or cross-country skiing. Saariselka Luosto uh, are, one, um, are the main, uh, some of the main ski resorts in eastern Lapland. And also Rovaniemi has its own ski resort a couple of miles from the city center. Rovaniemi is the capital of Lapland and situated at the Arctic Circle. Crossing the Arctic Circle and visiting the Santa Claus village in Rovaniemi is definitely a must to do when in, in, in the city. Here where you see the uh, blue uh, light uh, on the right hand side of the picture, that's where actually the Arctic Circle is situated. So everything on the left hand side is north of the Arctic Circle and everything on the right hand side is south of the Arctic Circle. Everyone knows that Santa, the one and only, comes from Finland, right? Well, uh, although the exact location of his private retreat, Korvatunturi, uh, is unknown, his official hometown is Rovadiemi, and there he greets visitors all year round in the Santa Claus village. So high chances are you meet the brood of the reindeer as well. In it, Rovaniemi, it's also possible to have dinner in the world's biggest and coolest iglu restaurant, the Snowland. Like husky ride, skiing and snowmobiling, also snowshoeing is possible basically everywhere in Lapland. Icebreaker cruise, icebreaker, Sambo used to serve as an icebreaker in the Baltic Sea, but as the ships grew bigger, it became too small to help the big cargo vessels. Instead, Sambo is now offering a unique experience for visitors on cruises through the frozen sea. One of the highlights is when it stops and there is a possibility to float in thermal suits in the opening that Sambo just created in the ice. There are so many things to do in winter Finland, no matter what the weather is like. In fact, we say in Finland that there is no bad weather, just bad clothing. Due to the long winters, we are used to dealing with the snow and ice in our country and everything works like clockwork also during the winter time. The schools are never closed because of snow or bad weather and public transportation always runs. For example, Helsinki Airport, well, Airport's world famous snow patrol is ready to do the snow removal on the runaways in 11 minutes. This concludes my presentation about Finland. I'm very happy to answer if you have any questions and uh, thank you again for your attention. Thank you, Holly. Now we will hear from Michelle from Cox and Game. Hi, everybody. So I'm Michelle, I am the destination specialist for Europe here at Cox and King. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit, um, give you a brief background of our company. Um, so Cox and Kings, we were established in 1758. So we are the world's oldest travel company um, for about 260 years now. Uh, we led the first Mount Everest expedition in 1922. Also organized Gandhi's first trip to Europe. Um, and today we combine our legacy with innovation and global reach to deliver unforgettable experiences. We also offer exclusive luxury experiences crafted by the U.S. team here um, of destination experts and specialists in our global destination management companies. So Cox and Kings, we're a boutique luxury tour operator, and we offer journeys to over 100 destinations worldwide. Um, we offer a full line of luxury products, private FIT from five star plus customized journeys, um, as well as luxury small groups that offer unique experiences with small groups at a five-star level. And we also have a dedicated in-house team of destination experts who curate unique experiences and gain special access for luxury travelers. So as I mentioned, we're the world's most experienced travel company. We've been running for about 260 years. And our team of expert destination specialists um, when you work with us, you'll have one specialist that will be dealing with you from start to finish. So you'll have one contact person to reach out to should you have any questions during the entire booking process. Um, we get exclusive insider access through network of local companies. And we have 24-7 customer care with direct line to US while traveling. 
And here's just some of our destination specialists that are in the office. Um, we have destination specialists for all the regions from India, Middle East, Asia, uh, Latin America, and Europe. Um, so feel free to give any one of us a call and we'll be happy to help uh, with anything you need. And this is me, Michelle, again, destination specialist for Europe. And I'm just going to talk about one of our programs that we offer for Finland. Um, this is a private journey, uh, 10 days, 9 nights, and takes in a few of the, the main city, Helsinki, uh, the capital, as well as Finnish Lapland. Um, and I'll just kind of give a little bit of background of this itinerary. Um, it starts in Helsinki with two nights. And uh, with Helsinki, you'll be able to do a full day city tour, see some of the main highlights. And since this is a winter wonderland package, we'll usually include the Christmas markets as well if they are going on during the time that your clients are traveling. From Helsinki, um, we suggest three nights in Saraselka. And we'll include the flight from Helsinki up to the Finnish Lapland. And there we'll do some activities such as sleigh rides uh, with reindeers, uh, dog sledding with the Huskies. Um, we're able to do uh, skiing up there as well. Um, and then we suggest one night in Luostjo at one of the Igloo hotels um, that they offer there. And then finishing with three nights in Rovaniemi. And there, as Holly mentioned, we can do the Sampo icebreaker, um, do a visit to a local amethyst mine, um, and then also do the, the special igloo restaurant as well that Heli had mentioned. Um, and then of course, the Santa Claus Village with the crossing of the Arctic Circle. And now I'm just gonna go into a couple of the different hotels that I wanted to mention that I feel are worthwhile in Finland to talk about. One of them is the Tuxlautsen Arctic Resort. This is one of the more popular igloo resorts in the Finnish Lapland. Um, they offer plenty of the igloo hotels, as you can mention here, igloo rooms. Um, and then the, it's located about 30 minutes from Ivalo Airport. And they also have plenty of activities to offer at the resort as well, such as the husky and reindeer sledding, snowmobiling, uh, northern lights hunting, ice fishing, uh, skiing, snowboarding, and then the Sampo icebreaker as well. And this resort is pretty popular, so I also suggest the Santa's Aurora Hotel, which also offers igloos um, as well. And this is just another uh, property that we typically use um, since we know that Kaxlautsenen usually does book fairly quickly, this is another option for your clients. And then now I'll just talk in about some of the experiences that we offer in the Finnish Lapland area. Um, so we do a lot of northern lights hunting, and whether that's by a snowshoe walk, as you can see in this picture here, um, people just they strap, strap on the snowshoes and we'll be able to take them out for a walk to hunt for the northern lights. And we could also do this by snowmobile as well. Um, so we'll be able to offer a couple different options if whether your clients are a little, would like to just prefer to walk or if they would prefer to have a little bit more adventure and go by snowmobile. Um, we also can include the Helsinki Christmas markets as well. And I know Heli kind of touched a little bit on this, but this is something that usually goes on uh, from December 1st to the 22nd for the Christmas markets, and so we would be able to include that as well. Uh, the Santa Claus Village, where you'll get to meet Santa Claus, this is a great activity for families. If you have small children, um, they'll be able to meet Santa Claus, take a picture with them. You'll be able to send a postcard home from the North Pole. Um, and then, of course, crossing the Arctic Circle uh, as well up there. We can offer skiing as well as snowboarding in Luosto and cross-country skiing as well, uh, depending on what um, level your clients are interested in. Um, so we'd be able to offer that. Husky sleigh rides is one of the most popular things that uh, clients like to do up in the Finnish Lapland area. They get to ride with one of the mushers, and it's usually about half an hour to 45 minutes for a ride, and typically will include a hot lunch for them as well, so that way they can relax with the dogs afterwards. 
we also do the reindeer farm visits with the sleigh rides as well. You can go meet the reindeer and then take a little sleigh ride with them. The traditional Finnish sauna, I know Heli kind of touched a little bit about dipping into the cold winter waters, and that's something that is pretty traditional uh, up in Finland, and so are the Finnish saunas, of course. Usually after you spend some time in the sauna, you can jump out and dip into a cold pool just to complete the experience. These are some of our brochures that we offer. We have two brochures, one for all of our private journeys um, and one for our luxury small group journeys. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we'd be happy to send you some brochures if you're interested in. And as I mentioned, our team of destination specialists here are always happy to help. <laughs> and that's it, this is our contact information. Thank you, Helly and Michelle, for this insightful webinar. I'm going to um, uh, ask a few questions now that were submitted. Um, Helly, which months are the Northern Lights visible? Uh, the Northern Lights season starts in September, and it's um, all the way till April. So basically, whenever it's dark enough to see them, the Northern Lights are there always uh, up in the north because it's so close to the uh, uh, to the North Pole uh, in the Arctic part of, of, of Europe, which means Finnish Lapland, for example. Um, but because we have the midnight sun and the nightless night during the summer period, it's not possible to see them. But yes, September, April is the season. And Michelle, how long of an itinerary would you recommend to somebody traveling just to Finland? I would recommend about seven to ten days. I think that's a good amount of time. That way you have a little bit of time in Helsinki, you get to explore the capital and some of its surroundings, and then you'll be able to also move up to the Lapland area and spend some time up there as well. So I think seven to ten days would be a, a good time. And Heli, I know we focused a lot on the winter uh, experiences here today. If someone were to travel in August, could you name a few experiences that they might be able to have outside of the Lapland experiences? Lapland is a very different destination actually during during the slowest time. So uh, if you have clients that are more adventurous, interested in hiking or river rafting or these kind of experiences, Lapland would be a great destination to go uh, also in, 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 in August. But if they're interested in, in staying more in the southern part of Finland, then there are two other regions which I definitely uh, would recommend to combine with uh, first stay in Helsinki and then do an extension from Helsinki either to the Lakeland area, uh, for example, to eastern part of Finland, uh, Saima, Lake Saima is one of the biggest lake areas. They have beautiful villas there. There has some resorts there as well. And it's also possible to, to rent your own summer cottage and with the own sauna by the lake. And that's just uh, relax and have your Finnish style of holiday. And then the archipelago on the coast side, um, there are several options. Turku is the main destination on the, in the archipelago. It's the, one of the biggest uh, cities after Helsinki, also our former capital with a lot of history, uh, Castle of Turku, for example, and uh, it has a very beautiful archipelago with small, um, more maybe bed and breakfast style uh, facilities. And then the Orland Islands is an excellent uh, destination as well to combine. Uh, Orland Island is between Finland and Sweden, and there is a ferry connection both from Helsinki as well as from Turku. Uh, to, to go to the Orland Islands. So this I would recommend doing, depending on a little bit what kind of clients you have and, and what their interests are. Thank you. Thank you both so much uh, for hosting us today. Um, we will be following up uh, with some information on Finland and Cox and Kings to everyone that participated. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.